Learning how to establish and maintain healthy relationships is essential for us all. Some of the benefits include less stress and an increase in happiness. Recently, a group of 14 local teens from six schools in the region participated in a teen leadership program in support of healthy dating relationships. I spoke with Monica Moran, the manager of domestic violence prevention projects for the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, and Jack Patrici, founder and principal at Growing a New Heart, who co-facilitate the leadership group together, as well as student Isra Nadim, who just completed the program. They spoke about the importance of having these types of conversations with teens, shared what they learned, and discussed the impact this program has had on them. There were um, 10 different schools involved, students from 10 different schools, and um, it was a collaboration between a couple of organizations, Growing a New Heart that Jack is from, I work with the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, two rural task forces, Southern Hill Towns and Where River Valley, and also the SPIFI Coalition, the Strategic Planning Initiative for Youth. And we all um, got together to do this initiative. Uh, many of us work in schools, and I and, and Jack go into high schools and where and Gateway and do prevention, which we couldn't do because of COVID. And so it allowed us to do something we've wanted to do for years, which is bring teens together from different schools. But in, there's, the transportation is such an obstacle. But now since we are all on Zoom anyway, it was like, oh, we can finally do that. So um, yeah, so that's... So Jack and I facilitated a group of 14 students from the different schools. Now, learning the values of healthy relationships and how to establish and maintain them is something that is important for all of us to know at any age. So why was it important for Monica and Jack, you both, to establish this group with a teen, with teens from high schools? The materials that we share are for everyone. And I've been doing this work, anti-violence work for over 30 years. And I myself uh, was in some great early relationships. And then I uh, was in a relationship, which I, I was working at what we used to call a battered women's shelter, doing uh, prevention work in schools with young people. And when I met someone who I asked my board, they knew the person, the person was a therapist, a mediator, great communication skills. And that little checklist we give, like make sure people are like this, um, I, all the boxes were checked and that person ended up being abusive towards me. And it may, I was working in the movement. And so it really made me think, what is it that I needed to know when I was the age of the people that I was working with at the time that were not showing people? And so that's where the framework we came up with that we use, uh, the, the core of it came from really testing these ideas out with young people. And then afterwards, um, part of my uh, work changed and I started working also with people who harm others in relationship and they're older and without fail, Along the way, they would say, I needed to know this when I was 11 years old. Why don't they teach us this when we're young? And um, when I started working uh, with Monica, we both work on a project with the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, a division that works with sexual and domestic violence that helps fund part of our time to do this. Um, we both had this passion for doing public education, but we knew the real change happens when everybody knows it when you're at that age, when you're uh, before you get into a really deep, long, committed relationships. And so um, we joined our skills and our experience. Monica has been doing this for decades, too. And uh, with with the pandemic, like Monica said, it was this opportunity to get all these kids together. Isra, you were one of the participants of this group. What compelled you to be part of this project? And what was your experience like? What were some of the values that you learned? Um, I learned a lot of values. I think the first would be that Monica and Jack made such an opening and welcoming environment where I think we all felt welcomed. And although we didn't know each other, we opened up really fast. So I think all the values that we learned, we kind of were, we were taught and we kind of used in this group. And we practiced them a lot. We learned about the cycle of abuse and we also learned about open conversation and then aspects of a healthy relationship. And I think these can all be applied to our future. I think that we're all still very young, so we don't know a lot yet. But just by knowing these things when you're young, you can apply them to your future and also like help those in need who you may know or who may be in a negative relationship. 
Now, according to the National Domestic Hotline website, a disturbing um, statistic is that on average, one in 10 high school students um, has experienced physical violence from a partner. What can we do to take action and begin to change that? In order to take action, the first step is to initiate conversation, um, maybe not with the person who's um, obviously abusing, but the person who's being abused, to just talk to them and understand how they might feel, not to uh, necessarily offer your advice right away, but just understand their position, what might, what, like, what might they be facing in their relationship, and what might they fear, because in a relationship like that, there's a lot of fear and a lot of negativity where they might not open up right away. So you want to establish a solid base where they feel welcomed and they feel like they can talk to you without you judging them. I would echo that and build on it. I think as a, as a culture, we, we actually need a whole paradigm shift and, and we need to start thinking about making sure that teens don't graduate from high school without this information. So that that would be the real the the real shift. If it was normal for everybody who was 18 to understand when is conflict safe and when it is abusive and what are underlying abusive values and what are values of health and equity and how do you know? Because all relationships start out great. It's complicated. It's a calculus. It's as complicated as calculus, even though we like to think it isn't. And so if we could make it normal that you know everybody like that this is as important as learning anything like math and English it should be on the MCAS and then it would be infused in all our conversations and parents would know it they could talk about it to their kids and uh, right right now it's not really seeped into our culture upon completing the program the group created a video that talked about what they all um, learned and what was really inspiring for me when I was watching the video was to hear and see the confidence that all of these young women projected. Um, what was the most inspiring and biggest takeaway for you all as coordinators and facilitators and also Israel for you as a participant? So I spent a lot of time with my son who's a teenager who, who did that film. I'm so proud of his work. So I got to really watch people as we were editing it. And I was so blown away by seeing how much they knew and, and be, made their own. It just made me, I mean, I was joking with Monica, I'm done now. If I could afford it, I can retire. Let's let them do it. It just felt great. Like, oh, there is hope. The kids are all right. I think seeing the depth of their understanding after having 24 hours was so gratifying because I go into the classroom and maybe I have an hour. Sometimes I'm lucky enough to get two or three. I'm really throwing out the red flags. I'm like, you, maybe one of you will catch this, you know, life-saving raft, but we don't have enough time. But to really have the time and to have the teen sit there and explain these con complex concepts, I, I, it was just such a treat. Yeah, I agree. I think that was interesting to see that we all learned so much and we didn't even realize it until we watched the video where a lot of us said we sounded like professionals because in the way that we explained such intricate ideas and concepts, we did it at a level where we didn't realize we knew all that until we spoke about it. Now, since the first um, group has just completed, what's next? How do you continue moving these conversations forward? We are on week two of our second group. We were just planning one group, but we had a lot of interest. So we we're like, okay, let's do a second one. So we're revising it, we're fine tuning it. And I think we're gonna uh, figure out how to keep doing this and even maybe develop a curriculum and train other people too, because uh, this is, is really important. And one part about doing it this time, we have uh, two teen oh, leaders yeah. co-facilitating with us, which makes it even more rich. And I hope like as we develop it, it becomes something that becomes part of the model. Yes.